What monsters lurk in the far reaches and murky depths of your world? In this video, we'll be talking about why you might want to add monsters on your map and how you can actually do that as we draw a few together. Hi everybody, my name is Nate and you are watching WASD20, a channel about tabletop RPGs and fantasy maps. Now, monsters on your map can serve many different purposes. For some, they are just a bit of flavor that give you the impression that, hey, this is a fantasy map here. But it's actually not just fantasy maps we see these on. We also find various sea creatures on all sorts of historical maps, and I'll be showing some of those from this book right here. So sometimes monsters can just be used to add a little bit of flavor and give the kind of a feel for the sorts of creatures that exist in your world. And other times they can actually be markers that are saying specifically, these types of creatures live in this area, be careful. I'll be honest, mostly on my maps, I just draw them in because I think they look cool and add to the flavor of the map. But I'm definitely open to hearing some of your thoughts on why else you might want to add these monsters on your maps. For our first monster, we're going to be drawing a pretty classic sea serpent. But before we do that, I do want to thank my sponsor for this video, World Anvil. Chances are, if you like drawing maps, you also like world building and or storytelling. And there is no better tool to organize all of your world and story information than World Anvil. You can describe your world in great detail, link pages for various cultures, settlements, characters, and hey, types of monsters. You can even upload your maps and tag locations, linking them to the articles. Recently, World Anvil gave users the ability to create their own discussion forums attached to their worlds, which even have features for RPG play-by-post. Anyway, there are just way too many cool features to mention here, but you gotta go check it all out over at worldanvil.com. And now, on with the monster drawings. So the first creature I will show you how to draw in this video here is a pretty classic sea serpent. And I'm gonna start out in pencil here. And the way I start this out is I make a little tail at the end, and then I usually draw two sort of humps in the middle. And these are not like humps on the back so much as they are portions of the serpent that are rising above the water. Then lastly, we're gonna do a neck in the front uh, with a little head. You'll also notice I put these little back spikes on the back of the head. And uh, these, to me, give it a bit of a dragon-ish look, which I kinda like. After I have those basic lines in place, I now I'm gonna go in and thicken them to you know, give it the actual uh, thickness of the creature. For the ink work, I would normally use a really thin pen, but for this one I used my Pigma graphic pen, which in hindsight was a little too thick. I add an eye and a little mouth, and then uh, we could be done right here. We could be done with our basic sea serpent, but I am gonna add a little bit of like shading to the underside of the sea serpent. So I'm just drawing some lines here and then I'm stippling in a little bit of shading. And then the next step is I'm penciling in some wavy lines to uh, give it the impression that it is disturbing the water. It just kind of makes it feel more at home in the sea of my map. I'm now going in with a much thinner pen and just kind of scratching in these little wavy lines, somewhat circular like they're gathered around the parts of the sea serpent that are sticking out of the water. One last thing I did that I actually haven't done before in the past is I decided to add some little back spikes. I just felt like it needed a little something more. Uh, one sea serpent that's a little bit similar is this one from the cover of Jared Blando's book, How to Draw Fantasy Art and RPG Maps. Uh, and one of the things he does is he doesn't show the head, which is kind of cool because it leaves it to the imagination. Uh, so yeah, this is another good looking option. Uh, you can see my son actually made a map and he did this same thing, uh, my nine year old boy. So yeah, pretty cool, nice work, buddy. One other sea serpent variation that I think is a lot of fun is to do the sea serpent wrapped around a ship. This example is from a Swedish map that was actually published in 1539. And uh, this is coming from the book, The Art of the Map, an illustrated history of map elements and embellishments. I'll put a link down in the video description. It's a pretty cool book. Mm -hmm. 
For the second monster we're going to be drawing for this map, we're going to be drawing some kind of tentacled beast. Also a sea creature. So a bunch of tentacles rising up out of the water. Now this could be a kraken, this could be a giant squid, this could be some other things, I'm not totally sure. But the first step is just to draw some individual lines curving up out of the water, one representing each tentacle, and then we're gonna go in and thicken those lines. And for that process, I just decided to go straight to ink for that uh, to save time and to get to the stuff you can see a little better. I think it looks really good if there's some overlapping and you just gotta kind of go in and pick which ones you think will be in front. Uh, but yeah, the overlapping kind of gives it this chaotic feel of this beast thrashing about in the water. Our next step is going to be to draw sort of a dividing line on each tentacle to decide where our suction cups, is that the right word? <laughs> suction cups? Uh, anyway, where the suction will go, uh, where the textured part of each tentacle will be compared to the smooth part. Next up, we are gonna be drawing those suction cups. And the way we do this is just making dark little ovals. Uh, you can see that I'm not really putting too much thought into the placement of these. Generally, these tentacles are going to be pretty small on a larger map. So uh, getting super detailed with it and drawing them actual like 3D prismatic um, is probably not gonna be worth my time. Nate, move your paper. You're drawing off camera, dude. Um, yeah, so anyway, in this step I drew the waves and uh, I tried to just do a little bit of a different style for this one, uh, making actual little wave lines like that and trying to especially focus on putting waves where the tentacle would touch the water and uh, also going in the background a little bit and trying to make uh, sporadic layers of waves. Now, generally when I am putting this on a map, I really do just like the tentacles. Uh, it kind of implies a kraken probably, but also gives that bit of mystery that we don't really know what's beneath the deep blue sea. However, for this one I decided, you know what? Let's try to actually draw the head of a beast. Now, kraken have been depicted in so many different ways, and uh, it just depends on your edition of D&D &D or your mythology or whatever. So I'm going with a bit less of a squid-like thing and a bit more of a, a monster face. And uh, yeah, just trying to make kind of a random looking monster face that looks like it could fit with those tentacles uh, and a big maw with sharp teeth. Just as with the sea serpent, another cool variation is a kraken encountering a ship, maybe pulling it underwater like we see on this animated map from Kraken Rum. Yeah, that's a thing. And uh, my son also did another cool drawing that I thought I'd show on video here. <laughs> He's even got some nice little splash effect around the tentacles. Uh, not bad, son, not bad. For our third and final monster, a dragon. Now I penciled this one in off camera just because I was struggling to get the right shape and it was just taking forever. Lots of erasing and uh, finally got one I was satisfied with. So now I'm adding the ink here. For the wings, I'm going with a bit of a tucked look. The wings are not totally splayed out, uh, but it looks like the dragon might be trying to be a little more aerodynamic. The wings are not uh, fully extended. And I do like to do these sort of swoopy spike things at the bottom of the wings and then uh, lines attached to those. On the edges of the wings, I'm kind of making a thicker, almost bone-like impression there on the uh, top and outside edges. And then I'm adding little blackish spikes as well to make it look a little more sinister. Now there are so many different styles of dragons or drakes. Uh, so go out there and just look up pictures and, and see what sorts of looks you like. For me, I didn't really study any one particular type of dragon when I was drawing mine. I just kind of went with my gut. But I did like the idea of a curved tail. I did give my dragon sort of hips, if you will. Uh, and I also did decide to give it uh, a bit more of a blunt snout with some horns going back. 
To me, the hips actually give it a bit of an impression that there are some legs down there without me having to draw legs. Um, and at this stage, now I'm just going in and adding a little more detail, a little bit of texture to the wings. So you can see like sinew stretching or something like that. For the tail, I decided to give it a little bit of a spiky end. And then I also decided to give it some back spikes. And so just kind of going in and drawing these darker lines gives that impression. Now, one thing that can look kind of cool would be if you were to draw the shadow of the dragon elsewhere on your map, just a little bit adjacent to the dragon. Um, I've seen this done and it can look really good, but uh, I decided for mine, uh, I'm not gonna try to do that. I've actually always struggled to get that to look right. I've tried it on maps before and didn't like the way it turned out. Now in this book, Fantasy Mapping Drawing Worlds by Wesley Jones, he does give a couple other ideas for dragons. Uh, first off, I love how on the cover, and I didn't even notice this till after I started editing the video, uh, there's this little dragon just wrapped around some hills on the cover. I love it. It's even got a little bit of smoke coming up from its nostrils. Really cool touch. And then inside the book, there's a tutorial on how to draw a dragon. So if you don't want to do a top-down view, you don't have to. Um, you could do something like this. Now this Wesley Jones book is pretty cool because it gives a ton of examples of actual different styles of maps in the back of the book. And on this one right here, you can see several different types of dragons drawn onto the map. Now, I really like this because when you give it a label like this, it actually implies this is not just decoration for your map. These are meant to show territories that are controlled by these various types of dragons. Lastly, I wanted to show some of the other inspiration and ideas from these historical maps in the art of map. There are just all kinds of interesting beasts and we see various parts of them some we see the whole body leaping out of the water others we just see a head poking out sometimes just a tail and there's just all sorts of really crazy looking funky creatures most of which were made because navigators would describe certain creatures they saw out at sea to the cartographers and uh, there was a little bit clearly lost in translation at times, or maybe they really did see these things. Also, quick shout out to my seven-year-old daughter for reminding me of the possibility of merfolk on your map, just chilling on a rock somewhere in the corner. Uh, not necessarily a monster per se, but uh, pretty cool. So nice work, Bean. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for this one here. I wanna thank you so much for joining me, and I definitely wanna thank the WASD20 patrons for their support. If you wanna join me for weekly live map drawing streams, patrons get access to that. A lot of these streams involve me just kind of tinkering around with ideas like this for videos, and they get to see kind of the process of what it takes for me to come up with some of these video ideas. Other times I'm working on actual map commissions or I'm trying out new techniques. The times vary, but I usually do them Sunday afternoon or evening Eastern time. So if you wanna join in, it's a lot of fun, and I would love to have you go over to patreon.com slash WASD20 and become the newest member of the patron army. Thanks so much for your support, patrons. All right, that's going to do it for this one, everybody. Take care. You'll see me again very soon.